Hello and welcome to 3.3 Solve Mixture Applications. Um, we are looking at two objectives, uh, solving ticket word problems and mixture word problems. We will pertain it to uh, these uh, particular types. So I have built a template with um, formulas in, in the table, so it's easy for us to collect and capture the data in the table and use them for building equations. Our focus would be on asset problems, mixture problems, and investment problems. We won't do much of travel problems, but it's good to have that information there because it's a basic formula. Uh, distance equals rate times time, but we won't do much of travel. So um, these are the three types you might see in your assignments. For if, if you do not see a problem that's discussed here in this video, obviously you have to go back to your OpenStax and uh, look at other problem types and use these tables appropriate tables to plug in your, um, um, your data to build your equation. As you can see on the top of each, uh, the, the, the top row of each table has the formula. For instance, the acid strength percent times number of liters gives you acid amount. Price per pound or price per ticket, okay, whichever problem type it is. So let's say it was a ticket problem. So we look at the, the bottom uh, row of it. So price per ticket times number of tickets equals total sales. Okay. And we just saw an um, investment problem in the previous video, which was simple interest, I equals PRT. And you have P times R times T equals I in columns. Here's the first problem. At a school concert, the total value of tickets sold was $1,506. Student tickets sold for $6 each, and the adult tickets sold for $9 each. The number of adult tickets sold was five less than three times the number of student tickets sold. How many student tickets and how many adult tickets were sold? Okay, this is a word problem very clearly. So what we could do is you could actually use the seven step process that we did in the previous video and identify your variables. That's one way to do it. And uh, in which case, the, the, I think the fifth step, you would insert this table. Okay, you could do that. Um, we could also try to um, you know, do those things by the side and just insert the numbers into the table. So just for variety, I'm going to um, do, do it that way. All right, uh, let's highlight the ones uh, we, we know. The total value is 1506. Student tickets is 6. Adult tickets is nine each. And then here's the relation. They are trying to relate or connect the number of adult tickets with the uh, student tickets. So it says the, uh, the number of adult tickets sold was five less than three times the number of student tickets. We'll come to that. But the crux of the matter is they want us to find the number of student tickets and how many adult tickets were sold. All right, so to, to help us enter these values in the table, the first thing, thing is uh, we need to try to improvise this table for our problem, okay? So uh, in our problem, we have um, student tickets and adult tickets. So type A, type B is a general version for it. So I will say student tickets and adult tickets, S and A, okay? So um, do we know the number of tickets? So again, let me improvise this. Let me remove this pound uh, part of it because we're not using that. We're only using the ticket side of it. So improvise your table for our problem. And um, the, the, the first column says price per ticket. And the type is student, right? So student, the price per ticket or for students is given to be six. That I'm putting that right from the... You don't have to put the dollar symbol, but I just do it so you can see where I got that from. And uh, the price per ticket against the adult uh, row is given to be nine. So let's enter that. The number of tickets for the students, do we know that? No, we don't. We need to find that. The number of adult tickets, do we know that? We don't know that. Okay. What about the total sales? What's the total value? Yes, the total of the student and the, the adult tickets was 1506. So we have that. Okay. So in order to um, find the number of tickets, I have to, I have not used one important piece of information yet. Okay. So I am going to point 
to that particular statement there. And let's see. It says the number of student ticket, the, sorry, the number of adult tickets sold was five less than three times the number of student tickets. Okay. So the adult ticket is uh, explained in terms of student tickets. Okay. So we really don't know either of them. So for convenience, I'm just going to say, well, let S be the number of student tickets. I like to use lowercase letters in my, um, uh, for my variables, so I'm using lowercase s. So that is what I enter in my table against the student row. The number of tickets for the student ticket is S, I don't know. But then I could use that to actually build the number of adult tickets. The number of adult tickets is five less than, so I'm gonna translate it word by word. Remember the translation? So five less than, so, um, you know what, I'm gonna just uh, quickly, there's no room there. So I'm gonna make room, okay. yes, okay. okay. Adult tickets is, or was, right? Five less than three times the number of student tickets. Okay, so five less means um, minus five, right? Yeah, so that has to go in the end. Three times the student ticket, so three times S, S is the student ticket, so three times S minus five will be the adult tickets. I built that statement or that um, mathematical um, expression right from the problem by translating it word to word. I bring that information back, now that is my adult tickets. Adult tickets is three S minus five. That is it. We filled the pertinent uh, parts of the table. So the, the table says, well, we have to multiply them, right? Multiply them across. So I'm using that information. Six times S equals six S. Nine times three S minus five equals nine times three S minus five. And we love the table for this reason because now You've got the total sales column filled, the last column is filled, and that is where you're gonna pull that um, together to form your equation. So the, the total sales, let me write it out here. Total sales is the number of student tickets plus the number of adult tickets sold, right? Um, number of adult tickets. Oops. Tickets sold. sold. Because this is the, it's not just the number of tickets, it's the number that was sold. So the amount um, that comes from the number that was sold, that's the total sales. That is giving us, total sales is 1506 is 6s plus 9 times 3s minus 5. Okay. That's it, now you have a mathematical statement. Go ahead, use the distribution property to simplify this. 1506 equals 6s plus 9 times 3, 27s, plus 9 times negative 5 is minus 45, okay? Go ahead and uh, collect all the like terms. So these two are like terms, six and the 27, they add up to a 33. 1506 equals 33S minus 45. I'm getting all these extra strokes, okay, minus 45. Um, now um, isolate your S by uh, first removing the 45 plus 45 on both sides will give us 1551, 33S. One more step to get S by itself, which is to divide both sides by 33. We go away. Now I have a calculator here, so let me quickly um, do that. 
1551 divided by 33 comes out to be 47. Okay, that's good. S is 47. You know, S is the number of tickets, not the amount. So S is the number of tickets, 47. And from S, you can find uh, the adult tickets. Adult tickets would be 3S minus 5. We built that previously. So here I'm going to plug in for S as 47 minus 5. If you do um, the calculation on that, 47 times 3, 141 minus 5, 136, which is 136. Okay. Now we're done with the problem. Okay. Just for our convenience, I'm going to box them, but that's not how you would leave your answer. You have to uh, interpret your answer. So I'll come back here and say the number of student tickets is 47. Now, see, you can't really attach any other unit to it. You can't say dollars or uh, or inches because it's the number of tickets. So you just you just have to explain it in your interpretation. And you would say the number of adult tickets was 136. Okay. How do you know you got it right? Check your answer by um, first um, getting the 47, multiply that to what was it, $6, right? Yeah, $6 per ticket. I'm going back to the table. So we just got that to be um, 47, so six times 47. Check that, 282, okay. And uh, nine times 136, that is 1,224. So I have 282, 1,224. I need to multiply, I mean, sorry, add those two uh, to get the total. If we get the total as 1506, we got it right. So I'm gonna come down here and do the check. Nine times, I'm sorry, what was it? Six, right? Six times 47 plus uh, nine times 136. So is that equal to 1506? That's the question. So I get uh, 282 plus 1224 and then 282. Plus 1224 on the calculator gives me 1506. I did the check to see if my numbers were correct, and yes, they do look correct. Okay, so that's how you do the uh, ticket problem. Uh, if, it, if the same thing came instead as pounds, uh, so much of uh, coffee A was mixed with so much of coffee B to create this blend. You know, if you have the same uh, scenario, but um, um, you know, in terms of uh, pounds, you'll do the same thing, but you interpret in terms of pounds. So here comes the next one that is related to pounds. Kumar is mixing raisins and nuts to make 10 pounds of trail mix. Raisins cost $2 a pound and nuts cost $6 a pound. If Kumar wants his cost for the trail mix to be $5.20 a pound, how many pounds of raisins and how many pounds of nuts should he use? All right, this is clearly... Uh, an extra problem that involves pounds. So I'm going to remove the parts that involve ticket. And then there's type A and type B, and I want to relate it to the given problem. Uh, what are the two types that are being mixed? Well, it is the raisins and the nuts. So I'll say R for raisins and N for nuts. Okay. Do we have the price per pound for raisins? Yes, it says raisins cost $2 a pound. So let's enter that. $2 per pound and the nuts cost $6 a pound because it's already priced per pound. That's looking good. Yeah. And uh, what is the resulting mixture called by mixing these two? It didn't happen in the previous problem because you don't have such a category. But uh, when you mix these two, the raisins and the nuts, you actually get trail mix. So the mixture is a mixture of the raisins and the nuts, which is a trail mix. And is that uh, the new product that you're getting? Yes, you are taking these two separate items and mixing them to create a new product to sell that product. And that is priced at 
550, I'm sorry, 520, right? 520 per pound, 5.20, okay? So we filled those things. Last time we didn't have the last row filled fully, but here we got that. So it's slightly different. Uh, let's go to number of pounds. So do we know how many pounds and how many um, nuts he should use? Well, we do not know that, okay? So we know that if um, the total number of pounds is 10, right? Let me write that here, 10. 10 is the total pounds of the trail mix. So if, if Kumar is using, uh, let's say, let's use X, okay. X pounds of raisins, right? And totally you can only have, you can go up to 10 pounds and he's using X of it. Then the remaining nuts must be 10 minus the X, right? That makes it so that when you add them, you get 10 pounds. So for instance, say your X was three pounds, three pounds of raisins. Then Kumar can have only seven pounds of nuts to add to it to create a 10 pound mix, right? If your X was uh, five pounds, then nuts must also be five pounds so that it adds up to a 10. That's the whole idea of X and 10 minus X. Okay. If X is used up, you only have 10 minus X left over to use for the nuts. All right, you got that. Now, um, again, the, the column, um, the, the, the top row tells you what to do with the columns. So they want us to multiply them across. So two times X equals two X. Six times 10 minus X is six times, open parentheses, 10 minus X, close. And the last row is to be multiplied as 5.2, five, uh, that's the price per pound of the trail mix, with the total pounds of trail mix, which is 10. So for 5.2 times 10. Just like that, you got your um, last column built. Now use your uh, formula, and sorry, use your um, uh, concept of total cost, right? Total cost is the cost for the raisins and the cost for the nuts to create the trail mix. So we have, I'm just going to lift this, um, I'll just show it to you here. You're basically going vertically down, you're adding the two to get the last one. So I, I add the two X plus the, two X is your raisin, Six times 10 minus X is your nuts. Together that gives you the trail mix, which is 5.20 times 10. Uh, let's write that out here. Okay, this is your raisin. Total cost of the raisins, so total cost of the nuts. And this is the total from your, for your trail mix. Okay. All right, now it's time to do the calculation. Two X plus distribute, six times 10 is 60 minus six X. And that's 5.2 times 10, which is 52. Collect all the like terms. 60, that's 2x minus 6x, right? Okay, that's 4x equals 52. You write that minus properly there, okay? We need to get x by itself, so let's get rid of the 60 minus 60 on both sides. Okay, that gives us negative 4x equals negative eight. Divide both sides by negative four. X equals negative eight over negative four is two. And X was the raisins, right? Go back to the table. X was against the raisins type. So uh, that re refers to two pounds of raisins. And we need to find uh, both the um, number of pounds of raisins and the number of pounds of nuts. Uh, nuts would be 10 minus X. So let me just write here, this was raisins. 10 minus X is 10 minus two, which is eight. This is nuts. So that two plus eight gives us 10. So yes, the total uh, number of pounds of the trail mix was supposed to be 10 and we get that. So quick check there works. And so I come here and I say, 
where we interpret this. So we say total pounds, or rather I should say number of pounds, right? Let me remove that. I'll say, um, separate this. Number of pounds of raisins is two. I already said number of pounds, so I'm just saying two. Let's say number of pounds of nuts is eight, okay? Or you could say uh, raisins is two pounds and nuts is eight pounds, okay? So it's up to you how you would do this, but remember that we are trying to preferably write a full sentence. So um, you could put that back in a full sentence, but uh, you could use the pounds uh, in um, measurement like LBS, or you could write it out in words. Then we have, um, well, just, just for you to see the check. Uh, what was it? It was, let's go back to the table. Two, two um, dollars per pound for raisins, so two times and six times. So that. So two times two pounds plus six times eight pounds. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, that's four plus 48, that gives us 52 total pounds, right? Um, I'm sorry, total cost of the trade mix. And that's what we got in our table. Let me take you back to the table. All right, 5.2, this one, 5.2 times 10, that gives us. 52. So our check works, and therefore we conclude that uh, the number of raisins uh, in terms of pounds is two, and nuts is eight pounds. Here's a different problem type. This involves uh, simple interest. Uma has $20,000 to invest in two different bank accounts. One account pays interest at 3% per year and the other account pays interest at 5% per year. How much should she invest in each account if she wants to earn 4.5% interest per year on the total amount? This makes perfect sense. This is what we do when we uh, try to invest our money in stocks, shares, or other mutual funds or any other investment. This is what uh, the investors do. We uh, usually uh, don't do it directly ourselves, but you can do it with little math knowledge. You could do, little, uh, uh, you could do a lot of research on this, but it uh, doesn't take much to begin to understand how you could um, earn some interest uh, by investing in two, two different bank accounts that gives you different uh, interest rates. So um, here we have um, a kind of a scenario. So let's, let's try to, um, what do I say? draw a storyboard here, okay? So Uma has a pot of $20,000 okay, that she wishes to invest. But she's gonna invest this in two bank accounts, okay? So this is fund A, let's say. There's, they didn't say anything like that, but we're just gonna call it A and B, just to differentiate. So in A, we don't know how much she's gonna invest, but A is gonna give, give her 3% per year, and B is gonna give her 5% per year, okay? Now, uh, you might wonder why would she not invest them all at 5% because it's gonna give her more money. Well, we need to understand um, what uh, funds are these are. We don't have that information, so we don't know why she made that decision. Uh, it could be because of uh, the bank was uh, steady, the investment was a, was a more mature, steady one, or uh, you know, maybe she got some other perk because of that, we don't know. Anyways, we got that, and then we want this to the interest that comes from A, right? But there's gonna be another interest that comes from B, isn't it? She wants uh, the, the, the interest from this and this to give her a total of 4.5% interest per year, okay? So she wants this plus this to give her 4.5% per year. This is how I understand this, uh, this scenario. So let's come back here and see if we can plug in information. Well, the total principal, she's investing, right? So that's your principal. The total principal is given to be 20,000. So if she's gonna put in X amount in A, 
she only has to she only has 20,000 minus that X amount to invest in B, right? So let's understand that. If X is the amount, so say she invests 5,000 in A, $5,000 in A, she can only invest 15,000 in B because she can only limit it to a total of 20,000, right? So um, your X is A, fund A, then 20,000 minus X will be the amount that she, uh, the leftover amount in fund B. That's the remaining amount. All right, the rate, well, we just saw that A gives her 3%, 0 0.03, and B gives her 5%, 0 0.05, but then she wants a total of 4.5%, so 0 0.045, okay? Move two decimal places to the left, be careful about that. And uh, all these uh, are invested, um, it just says per year, right? For the total uh, thing. So the time is one, one year. And again, our, our column tells us, we need to multiply them across to get the last column. You know you have to multiply because the top row tells you what to do. The P times the R times the T gives you the I. That's 0.03x, 0 0.05 times 20,000 minus x. And the last one is 20,000 times 0 0.045. It's kind of tiny, I should have made those boxes bigger. <laughs> Anyways, we know that we have to um, um, add the last, uh, column. So we have 0.03x plus 0 because that's in interest A, interest from A, interest from B will give us the total interest for a year. 0, 0.05 times 20,000. Oops, 20,000 minus x, right? That must be equal to 20,000 times 0 0.045. All right, now it's time for us to distribute and you know, simplify it. So I just move it a little to the left. So 0.03x plus after distribution, use your calculator, see what you get. Okay, it should be a 1000 because that's 10. Okay, 1000 minus 0.05x. And those two, when you multiply, gives you 900. Collect all the like terms. 0 0.03 minus 0 0.05 is negative 0.02x. Oops, let me get the x properly. Plus 1,000 equals 900. Uh, collect all the like terms uh, to the right. In this case, all the numbers to the right. So subtract 1,000. Makes sense. Negative 0.02x equals. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was not a 1000, it was a 100. Um, no, no, it's right, it's right. I'm sorry. The answer is a negative 100. Okay. I thought I uh, missed out the zero in the thousand, uh, but this is right. Negative 0 0.02 on both sides. To get x by itself, x equals, you could move the decimal point uh, on the right and the bottom if you're using uh, concepts from uh, algebra, free algebra. That comes out to be 5,000. Now X, let's go back and see what was X. X represented fund A, right? So if she is investing 5,000 in fund A, this is fund A, investment in A, then uh, 20,000 minus X would be 20,000 minus 5,000, which is 15,000. That goes to 
point B. Well, uh, we, there was no A or B in the problem. There was only the percentages. So we call fund A to be the 30%, uh, sorry, the 3% one, or 30% would be lovely. <laughs> not, not, rea um, not in reality though, no one gives that. 3% and 5% interest. We got that, now come back and conclude it. So let's say, uh, Uma invested $5,000, see the first time I insert the dollar symbol in the answer, I invested $5,000 in a um, fund that earns 3% interest. And she invested $15,000 in a fund that earns 5% interest. To get a total 4.5% interest. I get all this language from right from the problem. Okay. So the only thing I inserted was the 5,000 and the 15,000 to get a total 4.5% um, interest per year. That's it. So I hope this helps. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.